event and uh, what you go through to create an event. Uh, now we're live, it looks like, and uh, so the people that are in the event, yeah, my dog, <laughs> the people that are in the event can actually watch what's going on. I have two Bernese Mountain Dogs, two very big dogs, and the, one goes out, one comes in. It's, it's just a game they play all day long when I'm home. Um, but to do the event, it's really pretty simple, and I'm going to walk you through the process. So the first thing you're going to do is we're going to create, when we go to create an event, we don't have the name of your event yet, but when I created this event, it's pretty self-explanatory. You go to the page uh, to create the event uh, on the events page, and you, you click on and you give it a name, and you pick the time for your event, and you plug it all in. Let me see if I can, if I can even get to an events page. No, I can't open that from here. Uh, but it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory in that respect. And uh, you just walk through the process. There is an option, if you click on advanced, to make it an on-air hangout. You do not want to do that. All right? That's, that's something we used to do, and then we have changed that process. So you're no longer clicking on that, making it an on-air hangout. You're going to do that from within the hangout itself now. Okay, and that's the proper way to do it. So you set up your Hangout, you give it a name, and we're still working on you know, what we're going to call this. Uh, it's going to be a holiday hashtag event uh, for Google, and uh, we're trying to come up with something so you guys can brainstorm and come up with a cute name for us to have um, that is uh, not restricted to any certain wintertime holiday. You know, we, can, we can use that. All right, so you'll name your, you'll name your event, fill in the times, a location you don't need, you're going to put that in later, uh, and you invite people into it. Now, I would invite your friends, your circles, whoever you want to invite into it, not necessarily just food bloggers. Uh, you want to invite uh, other people that you might think are going to come into it. You also want to try and get a panel to come and sit with you. Like right here, we have four of us in here. That's not bad. That's a good panel to have when you're making something. Okay, and you can also lock it so no one else can come in at that point, too, if you in invite those people in. Um, then it's restricted and no one else will enter. So, um, oh, here comes David. Invite those people in. Um, then it's restricted and no one else will. Hi, David. How you doing? Hey, Dennis. How are you? Great. Good to see you. You too. Okay, so we're just talking about how to uh, create the Hangout, how to create the event, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, to create the event. Then what we're going to do to open it up. Now here's where you're going to come into a few little things. So if you want to take notes or if you want to watch it later. All right, you've created the Hangout or you've created your event. So that's done. All right, now when it comes time to open up your Hangout to bring people in or to teach your lesson or to show your uh, demo that you're going to do, you're going to start your Hangout like you normally would any time you do it. And then there is an option on there to make it an on-air event inside the Hangout. Okay, and you're going to click on that. All right, one, and you have to name it. So whatever the name of your Hangout is in the event, title it the same thing here. Okay, because this is going to make your YouTube video, and that's what it's going to call it. Uh, so at that point, you click on Hang Air on Hangout on Air, and when you do that, there's going to be a little embed button that's going to show up. And the embed button is going to show up right next to the broadcast button. There's a red broadcast button. I don't know if I can screen share. Do, does everyone have that on theirs, or? You have a bro you don't have a broadcast button, okay? Let me see if I can screen share. I'll show you what I'm looking at. Okay. Can you see that all? Or no, that's not good. It's like a fun house up in here. It's yeah, awesome. Know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I think it's like the never-ending never -ending circle. Is that a house of mirrors? Make it stop. I did. I did. <laughs> so you can see. Let's try that again. I evidently clicked on the wrong one. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. That was pretty neat. No, this isn't going to be any better. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we know it's not going to work. I can't show you from here because it keeps taking a picture of a picture of a picture of a picture of a picture. It's like uh, some kind of alternate universe is opening up. I'm afraid to let it go too far. Well, anyway, 
when you open up your on-air hangout, before you broadcast, before you let anyone else in, all right, this is what you need to do, is there will be a little box next to, there's going to be a red broadcast button up at the top hand corner. Everybody sees where they have the microphone with a slash through it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next to that, there's those little dots that talk um, when you're talk that move when you're talking. Right. There's going to be a red broadcast button to the left of that. To the left of that red broadcast button, it's going to say embed, and that's what you click on. So once you click on embed, two boxes are going to appear in a black box. One is going to say HTML, and the other is going to say URL. You want to copy the URL address. All right, so once you copy the URL address, you go back to your event page that you've opened up, and you're going to make some changes to it. And you, there's a little pencil in the top corner that you click on on your events page, and that will let you make any changes that you want to it. So once you click on that pencil, you're going to click on Event Options. And then when you open up Event Options, there's an Advanced button. You click on the Advanced button and it says Show Additional Fields. Okay, when you do that, it opens up a YouTube video field and that is where you paste your URL. So you're embedding this into a, into a YouTube video. And that's what you want to do anytime you do a live demonstration hangout or if you're teaching something or if you're doing something that you want to save uh, for posterity, this will keep it made that way. All right, so after you do that, now you've got it so it will embed so people on the event page can watch it live. You can also embed this onto your website so people on your website could watch it live. And it, can also, it will also be on your Google Plus profile page. So those are the options of where people can watch it if someone stumbles across any of those and it's happening. Uh, you have to actually put it into your website to, to make it happen. The other two places it's going to appear automatically. All right, so once you've done that, now you're going to copy the uh, address of the Hangout. All right, and that's up at the very top of the screen, above uh, the on-air, above you know, the top line. You copy that address, and you're going to go back to your event page, and you're going to paste that into location. All right, so that's telling people where you are. That's going to give them the link to click into the event. Now, besides doing that, before I come on, I always put it in an announcement right at the underneath uh, like the last thing I said you know click here here's the link for the uh, for the live hangout just to make sure but it will it will put one in but if people don't open that up or if they don't see it or if they don't look for it they might miss it so it's good to, to give them another way to get in okay now everything's good to go at that point people will start coming in but you're still not broadcasting yet. So anyone that's on the outside uh, on that event page or looking for it won't see anything until you go to the very top of the screen where it says broadcast, the red box, and you click on that. And then it'll there's a little bit of a countdown and it'll go going live and then you know you're live. And that's when you start. Okay, so does anybody have any questions on that process? I know it was like involved and tedious, but if you go back and you write them down as you go, and then walk yourself through it a couple times. Go in, open it up. You know, if you make a video, you can always go into your YouTube account and you can cancel it. You know, just put up a test event if you want to and, uh, and try that out and embed it and see what happens. Have a friend, you know, watch it to, to see if it works for you. Uh, but it's good to practice it and just to see if it is coming up the way it's supposed to come up and you'll know for sure. Because it's good to have confidence in what you're doing, you know, and not just hope that it's working, <laughs> which a lot of times some of us do. So, okay, and any questions on any of that? We good? Can you have something that broadcasts but it be private, which I know is contradictory? You know, David, I'm not sure. That's a good question, though, because um, I think if you're making it live to the live to the show, I don't know how you can it. Okay. Because as I was going through to find this, oh, there's an echo going on. It said that um, it was private. There were only certain people who were invited. Into this? Yeah. Hmm. David, do you have a headset or something? Not, not that I can grab. I just be quiet. Hmm. <laughs> 
I saw that too, where it said private. I was wondering what that. But meant. you still came but you in. Still though. Came in though. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Now I know last time I did this, people said they couldn't get in. Um, that it was locked, and and the room wasn't full one time either. Uh, when when I did my embedded uh, demonstration, uh, the one of the pumpkin crunch cake. So I know if you invite people into the room, I think it locks it down. But I think if it's not in, uh, in this case, if you guys got in, it's not in, it's not in a problem. Once you start Once you broadcasting, start is it locked out? Well, no, because well, David came in. Oh. oh. Yeah. Hi, David. Hi. You know what? I'm going to look away for a second and get a headset. That way, if I'm the one causing this, I'm sorry. That's okay. No, I, we've all done it, I'm sure. Yeah. And if you wanted to invite specific people, yes. so that, uh, how do you limit it to those specific people versus anyone coming in? Um, there is a way to lock it out, and I'll have to try and find out what that is um, to lock it out. But it, it's, it's simple. There's a box up at the top. Everyone should have on their screen and invite people box, I think, on the left-hand side. Okay, at that point, if you open that up, you can invite more people and you can invite people into the hangout. But let's say you have like four people on the panel, and, and you know, that's really important to do it right. You can invite those four people in right there. And before you go live, before you open it up to everybody else, like I, I can start the hangout and I can put you in there and you'll all show up, and then I'll go, okay, I'm going to go put the address in, I'm going to embed it and I'm going to open it up to everybody else. So that way, if you want to get people in and you want to make sure they're in, that's the easiest way to do it, uh, to invite them in directly. I really wasn't sure who was coming in, or I would have invited you some, some of you in um, directly into it. Uh, but that's always a good way to do it. And I'll check on that. Uh, this, is, this is still kind of new to me. Well, I just wandered in. I mean, it started, and it said join Hangout, so I did, and there you were. So. <laughs> did it say private for you also? It just said join, so I said okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And I, I think we had just started broadcast. No, you came in before. No, Stefani and Amy were in here. Uh, uh, I think you came in after that, so we had started broadcasting. So mm -hmm. that, that's a good question. It's something we should probably know. And if there is a way to lock it out, it might be a good idea in some instances to do that. Uh -huh. I, can, I can see having a lot of dry runs this weekend and deleting a whole bunch of crappy YouTube videos. <laughs> Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Practice makes perfect, and it's good to uh, to have a way to see what you're doing. Now, is anyone still getting an echo with me? Yeah, Cindy just came in. Hi, Cindy. So that yeah. Hi, it's new for me, so I'm kind of hanging back and watching. Okay. Uh, we're going to ask you to mute, though, until you have a question, because we'll get enough feedback from you. Okay? So if you could just mute yourself, that would be a big help. And then if you have a question, you can open up. In terms of scheduling, setting up these events, are we each setting up our own individual events, or are we are you're, there going to be like some kind of a group listing somewhere? No, you're going to set up your own individual events, but they are going to all have the same basic name, and we're okay, still so working on on okay. that name. It will be it's it's going to be a distinction of the holiday hashtag that Google is running. They're running events across the board and that is their uh, way that they show that they're part of one of their events. Uh, they're not really promoting this right now. This is a kind of a pilot, a test run for us to see. You know, we're working with the folks from Google to show that it will work and it will be something good and it's something they do can do ongoing and if they do it ongoing it may be something that they very well do promote. But in any instance Okay, you're getting exposure. You know, there are eyes on us to see what we do and how we handle this and how we come through with it. And you know, you know, if you do well, you know, even if you do bad and you try, you know, you're still going to get some points for that. And it's going to say, you know, a lot about you uh, trying it. I know he was. They were real surprised that we had so many people uh, sign up for this. So it was a good thing. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, last night, Gareth had a hangout, and he said we should have someone on our panel that would be the person to fill any dead space, that would kind of be our go-to person and read any questions that we couldn't hear while we were cooking. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. okay. now, you'll, you'll notice that there's a group chat box over on the right-hand side. 
and it'll tell you who comes in, who joins, who leaves. And you can also go down to the bottom and you can type, you know, you can type things. Are there any questions? So this way you're, you're liable to get people that don't have cameras or microphones, okay. which is kind of bizarre, you know, that you think they're coming into a, a hangout, but that will happen. So here's where you have. So if you have someone they can monitor this and they can be feeding you because you don't want to constantly be looking over here and take your eyes off. Mm -hmm. You know, remember like, and I, I have a bad habit of looking down because I'm looking at all of you when I'm talking, which isn't too bad, but you really want to try when you're, especially if you're doing a cooking hangout and demo, you want to try and look at the camera while you're cooking. You know, you can look down at what you're making, but when you talk, you want to, sometimes it's not good to have the monitor where you can see it because you're mm -hmm. going to look at the monitor. It's better to remember to look at the camera. It's my intention to designate one person to read any chat questions and have everybody else just muted the whole time, I think. And if we were going to really do this the way it should be done and moving forward, you know, this will be something as a, as a goal for us, you should also have another person who's going to tweet what you're saying, post it to Facebook, or, you know, do, do the whole other social media blitz on it for you. Okay, because then it really looks, you know, like it's very professional. Just like having these names under us, you know, it kind of gives it an air of authenticity. Uh, so, it, you know, and that's simple enough, again, with the, uh, the, the lower thirds on the Hangout toolbox. You just add that extension onto your, onto your uh, browser. Uh, everyone, I don't know, everyone's not using Google Chrome, so I guess it works. Amy, you said you weren't, right? You're using... I'm in Firefox. You're in Firefox. Um, Okay, so it, it works in other in other uh, browsers. And that's good. So can pe can we have a sign up for people who would say, okay, I'll be your go to yes. person. Okay. And okay. actually, did you did everyone see the posting of the schedule? I did. Yeah. I have not seen it. Where okay. is that? It, it's I listed it today. It's a Google Doc, and you now it's you can't sign up right now. Uh, Greg Wright from Google, who is, is helping us with this, who is asking us to do this, uh, helped set up the document for it. And he has it set up so you can sign up under each, of, under each individual event to help with the panel. Because, you know, you don't want it to be empty. You want to have three, four people in it. You know, and that's fine. That's enough. You don't have to have seven or eight. But if you do, that's great. Uh, but there's a place there to sign up so you guys can support each other. And, you know, and it's not a bad idea, like I said, just to do practice runs with each other. If you have time, you can connect. Uh, just come on and give it a try. Uh, I would time whatever you're going to make. Even if you don't actually make it, go through the process just so you become a little more familiar with it. If it's something that you haven't made a lot of times, if it's something you can do in your sleep, then you, know, you don't have to worry about it. And there are dishes that you have that are like that. And... Um, but just time it, just to get a feel for how long it's going to take. These should run about 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, if it runs 20 minutes, okay, it, we're going to live with it. If it runs, you know, an hour and 10 minutes, we're going to live with it. It's whatever it is. But your target range should be somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour. Uh, I think after an hour, it becomes too long. Even up to an hour becomes a little bit too long. So it's a good idea to use the magic of television. All right, when I did my pumpkin crunch cake, I showed everybody how to put it together. I mixed it. I, I fixed the pans. I set it up. I poured it into the pans. I put it in the oven, and then I went to the counter, and I took my cakes that were already done, and then I put it together. Okay, because you don't have the kind of time to stand around and watch the cakes bake, okay, or you don't want to spend 20 minutes engaging the audience either, which, you know, so you want to prepare yourself. Uh, for the event and have everything set up. Also, I don't want to scare anybody, but whatever can happen will happen. <laughs> of course. Okay. If it happens, Murphy will be joining us all with his law, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, you roll with it. Okay. And trust me, I have had everything, knock on wood, that could possibly happen, happen in a hangout. Okay. When I did my pumpkin crunch cake, my headset went dead. The people that were in there are going, Chef, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. So I had to stop, take it off, turn it off, go over to the camera, change the settings because you've got to go up to that little gearbox anytime you change something. Like if you're running two cameras, that's how you have to change it. There is software available to change it, but you still got to manually do it unless you're having both cameras live at the same time. 
So I had to do that, and I came back, and fine. And the Google guy said, oh, you handle that like a pro. I says, well, okay, that's because it's happened before. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, the other piece of advice I will give you, if at all possible, do not do this wireless. Okay? 90% of the time, 95% of the time, it'll work. 5% of the time or 10%, it will not. Okay, you'll have problems. So, again, anything you can do so you won't have problems is something you want to think about and do. All right, so I, I plug in, I have a cord that I run down the hallway uh, up here into the room. And I bury it under carpet so the dogs don't trip over it, or I don't trip over it, and uh, hook it into the computer. All right, I have a separate camera, and that, you know, if you're going to do these with any regularity, that's something you should think about. I have a Logitech uh, 910 and a 920, I think is the new model. I have both of those. Um, they're around $80, but if you're going to do these with any regularity, it's better to spend $80 and get something good than to spend $30 and wish you had gotten mm -hmm. something good. I have a question about, oh, go ahead, David. Thank you. Who runs those cameras for you? Uh, it's it's stationary on my laptop. Now, uh, right now it is. When I do my cooking demos, I have one positioned over the stove, mm -hmm. and I have I, then I use my laptop camera for the other one. So and, when I talk, and how do you switch back and forth? Then there's you go. There's a little gearbox up here, and I will show you what happens when I switch it. Okay. I switch on the little gearbox. It gives me two options. I have a Logitech HD Pro webcam C910, or my camera from my laptop and because my other camera is blocking it uh, you don't see it because so it's right over top of the other one we don't have I don't have that right now in the gearbox that's because I don't have other microphones uh, other cameras right no uh, you will always have even if you don't have them you'll still have this the gear that you won't they won't appear in your gearbox because you don't have them right, right. I just have built-in eyesight which yes. is my, my Mac, okay. Right, and your Mac works great for, for normal everything, but I think for, for cooking, I mean, you could probably use it for cooking demo, too. Have you used it for, like, for that before, David? Or No, I'm terrified of cooking demos. So I get <laughs> nervous enough when I go on the Today Show, so <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I think cooking demo is a step down from the Today Show, David. I I'm, just feel it. I'm just dipping in so I can see how to do this when I just talk with you in January, that's all. Okay. Um, but I mean, it, it works really well. Now, here's the other point. Now, does it change who you see in the big box when I did that, or do you still just see me? Just you. Just you. Okay. Because I did one demo, and there was another person in the big box for half of it because I hadn't clicked on me. So I think sound changes it if if there's nobody clicked and it moves. Um, so just be on the safe side. Make sure there's a little blue outline around your box. Okay. Because uh, I, I, again, anything that can happen will happen. That was one of the things that I've had happen. Well, right. you just taught me how to make my 920 work because I had no idea it was just sitting there being an $80 lump of plastic okay. until okay. you told me <laughs> to push the gearbox. I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> now, I've got the wireless, uh, this is a parrot, a blue parrot, and it has worked 95% of the time. Okay. And the, during my uh, pumpkin crunch cake, it stopped. And in another hangout that was nothing really, it stopped. So, you know, things can happen. Just be prepared. Uh, then I just, the, the microphone on this camera is really very good. So it's a good camera. It's a mic to use too. Yeah, in your gearbox, you'll have also settings for a microphone. And you can pick the webcam one or your, uh, your headset one. And then what you hear it through. And that's on a default device. You can check your connection speed. And you can test your sound. At the same time, too. That's that's great. That's that's good to know because I had no idea. And then, of course, next to what the other settings are, you know, turn your camera off or to turn your microphone off, which you really wouldn't want to turn yours off unless something really, if something disastrous happens, well, yeah, then you're going to go up and you're going to turn your camera off real quick and give yourself a moment to compose or whatever. You know, uh, pan catches on fire. Although, you know, the audience is going to like that. Uh, I, I did one of my first classes ever when I started teaching online, and it was two sisters from Holland and two sisters from Dallas, and they were in the same hangout. <clears throat> and we were making my famous buffalo chicken wings with my sauce, my, my really good sauce. And I'm, we're making the sauce, and we're getting everything ready, so let's get the wings. And I'm looking at them and going, 
damn, those are the biggest wings I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they, were, they were getting chicken legs. The concept of wings had gone by them. Or <laughs> by them and, they, and I'm thinking, well, I can go all... Uh, what's that chef that gets crazy? I can go all him on him, or I can Gordon Ramsay all Gordon up Ram one side and down the other. I can go all Ramsay on him. <laughs> That'll make an interesting YouTube video, or I can just go the other direction. Like, that's okay. They'll taste. They're good. jumbo wings. That's what yeah. they are. So they're still going to taste really good. You just might have to cook them a little bit longer. Okay, so you, you know you be prepared for you know, if you're doing something uh, and there's interaction of anything that can go wrong. And just so it doesn't throw you when it does happen. Because in your hangouts, things are going to happen. They just are. Uh, on my last hangout, if any of you saw it, we lost connection. I was almost through the whole thing, and we were just getting on to communities. And I think we overloaded Google that day because it was the first day the communities were really running. And Chrome shut down. The Nothing was working. The extensions weren't working. And it kicked us all off. Uh, mm -hmm. so. You, you do have a grace period of, I think, 10 minutes where you can re-enter, someone told me. So if you can get back on, you can get back into it. Um, it was about 15 for me, so it was gone at that point. So uh, if you do, you can just go in and create another event. If it was something you needed to finish or wanted to finish, you know, that would be the only way to do it at that point, to create another event uh, and open it back up and start over from where you were. Um, or just pick another day and do it again. You know, one of the two. Uh, just prepare. Prepare for the worst. You know, prepare and just hope that none of it happens and it'll be a lot easier going through. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, on the recipe, should we do things like chopping to show how we're chopping or should we have that already finished? I would have the majority of it finished, but okay. it never hurts to show people you know, because a lot of people really don't know how to chop right. Right. Uh, you know, I, I have parents come to me all the time because I teach a class at school, and they'll say, my daughter said, no, you're doing that wrong. <laughs> you know, you had a uh, okay. Which, which is funny. So, you know, you, you never know. It, okay. What seems basic knowledge to us is right. not basic knowledge to everybody. Okay. All right. Uh, also, when you do your demo, I'm going to ask you also to place your, uh, your recipe and instructions into the uh, the hangout information. I'm glad you said that because we're we're going to give them. This is like a, a freebie all the way around, uh, and you'll get traffic from it. Don't worry. You know, I know it, it's not as food bloggers and stuff. We we cringe over giving our recipes and things away for free sometimes, but uh, put you know put the ingredients list and instructions and everything in their form, and that'll be like when you're talking about what you're making when you set up your event as you're going down the about. Uh, list it. I'm going to make my famous yada yada yada, and this is the list of what you'll need. Okay, and that way they can be prepared, and people will appreciate the fact that you've actually done that. Uh, plus, they seem to really get excited when you share recipes with them. Uh, Could you also go ahead and just like link over if you have the recipe on your blog, you can just send them over there. You could link it. I would go ahead and put it up though. Just so it's there, because that makes Google happy too. Oh, okay. It's we we want to keep Google happy. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, that makes them happy because again, you're giving something to the people, uh, to the plusers. You know, you're giving them something, sending them. You know, uh, giving them a link. Like we give them links for everything else. So you know, this one time or this occasional time, you know, isn't a big isn't going to be a big deal. And you're still going to get traffic because then people are going to go to your site to see what else you've done. You know. Uh, once, once you've shown them what you can do, you know, you'll create excitement. You create a connection, and this is what's really important about this. And you know, I talk about community, and I talk about people. Tell me, I, I hear all the time, it it doesn't work. Google Plus doesn't work. And the problem is, isn't that it doesn't work. The problem is that they're not using it correctly. They're using it like Facebook. They're using it like Twitter. They're using it like every other social media. And you can't treat it that way. It's its own entire entity. It's, it's different. It's a community. People respond differently. You know, some of the old social media techniques will work, and other ones will just these people won't know what you're doing or why you're doing it, and it's going to turn people off. It's just like the, the new communities now. I go in some of them. And everybody's in a hurry to post their recipe. And you go to their page, and you'll see six different postings for different communities. Because you can't just do one blanket one for all communities, which is a good thing. Uh, 
And that's all they're doing. They're spending their time going there, and they're spinning their wheels. And I tell people it's like a hamster on that little roller. He's going around and around and around sharing his stuff with other food bloggers. And we love our friends. We need our peers. We need people to talk to, to talk things through. We need support, and we need guidance, and we need them for that. But we all have our own agendas. We all have what we're doing. And no matter how many times we say, boy, I, I'm going to make that, we rarely do. Okay, it's, it's, it's a strange time when we do. So sharing it with us is, is, is you're spinning your wheels. Okay, you want all the other people on Google. That is your audience. Mm -hmm. So I tell you to engage in other areas, to find other interests, to join other groups, to make friends in science and technology and, you know, uh, artistry and music and everything because everybody eats and everybody loves you know food porn so you're that's this is where you're going to increase your following this is where you're going to increase your readership through this so you have to think of Google as a community more than a social media okay. hey Dennis a technical question yes about the lower third I'm yes. saying that mine I hope mine is appearing correctly yes. you can mirror it if you want to so you can see it the way we see it but it's fine Mine is backwards to me. All right. So when I put my finger up, what mm -hmm. is this the left side of my face that you're seeing? If I were turned this way, I'm I mean, facing you. I'm seeing the left side of your face. Yeah, we're, it's like we're face to face. Okay. Because what I'm concerned about is that if I let's say I say okay to your left, or you're folding something from left to right, you're going to see it backwards. You can mirror in your lower third. You yeah. can push, click the mirror button, and then you'll see what everybody else sees. Okay. I have to go back to. Every time I hit lower third, it goes away. I need to go. You to know, mine is backwards for me because I wanted to see my name the right way. If your name's going backwards, then you're seeing what everyone else sees. If it's oh, going okay. forwards, if it's going forwards, then it's reversed. Okay, so like let me. If get you can back. see your own name correctly. It's reversed. Oh, okay. This is my left side. Okay, for okay. me, it's, it's saying that there's an error loading it. Okay. Yeah, and and it's, this is something good to work through too. You want to practice setting it up. And if you have someone else too, well, you, you'd need them there to. I guess you can't work the sound effects too. It's got some pretty fun sound effects on it too: applause and hissing and booing and and oohs and all kinds of neat things, but inappropriate for for most of what we're doing. But it's, it's, uh, not necessarily. Not <laughs> Maybe not for our first official group. Okay, and uh, moving forward, uh, we're going into January, and we're going to uh, do this more. And eventually, this is going to be offered to more food communities too. So uh, we'll be the pioneers of this. Though we're, they were very impressed at what we're doing in the community, and that we have uh, taken that we did had this many people sign up for it. It was really, really a, a nice thing to see. And um, and we'll be working hand in hand with some other communities too out there and trying to get. Uh, more videos on, more people on. Uh, the vision was the, to make it like a cooking network, you know. So yeah, and uh, it can only help you. You know, it can only help you. And then you know, once you have your YouTube videos, you know, you're going to want to have, I guess, ads on those too. Once they start you doing some action, David, do you do those at all, or I have them on Lead School and Aria that we've done produced professionally. Right. Um, but we will start. I was talking to uh, Greg Wright today. Good. That whatever I do, we'll stream over. Mm -hmm. He still doesn't quite know how, let's say you and I do one with three or four other people, all of us get to stream them to our own thing. He wasn't quite, he didn't give me an answer on that. He wasn't That's sure. That's a good question. Yes. Yeah, because you know you should all have a copy, be able to do that and have a copy, have some ownership yeah. to it. And I don't want it to come to David, my, my Gmail here, I want it to go on Leeds Culinaria, so I, have to, so I have to link that somehow. And he's going to show me how to do that. Good. Good, and that's that's kind of the same ask. question that I have. If you figure it out, I'd love to know because it's linking mine to my Stephanie you know, Pollock kind of, uh, YouTube account, and right. I really wanted to go to my Cupcake Project YouTube account, and I have no idea how to make that happen. I can't figure it out. Well, you know, drop me an email, and what I'll do is if I find it out or if I ask Greg and I get the answer, I'll, I'll ping you and let you know. Would you I do would it for me too? Sure. Everybody just email me yeah. and just say linking your – YouTube account, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to do my damn lower third, and I just can't get it. Perhaps what, is, what is your email, David? Uh, David at leadsculinaria dot com. Okay, thanks. Can you type it for us? Sure. Thank you. 
perhaps when you do get it, you could post it to the community too, so we have a, a copy of it. Yeah, uh, sure. Then that'll be good to know. And, and using the community, I mean, the community has been coming across really well. I'm happy with how that's moving. I think we're keeping it in a good direction because, like I said, you go in other communities and it's, it's chaotic right now. Uh, there's so many people coming in and so many people posting you know, pictures and recipes and the stream is just never ending. And, and it's kind of redundant. You're going to post the same thing to your public stream anyway, but you don't want to be double posting and triple posting. You want to come in here and ask the tough questions or ask the questions like, you know, I, I'm not, I don't feel I'm getting enough hits. What can I do? Take a look at my blog. Is there somebody that has time to look and tell me? Uh, or like uh, we had a problem. We're talking about cloud fare today. And is it really a good thing? Some of us are thinking no because our sites are offline. We're getting this we're offline message. You know, so maybe it's time when that happens that you just have to bite the bullet and spend a little money and get your own, you know, get a bigger server or, or go to where, you know, you're gonna, you're tra it's going to be able to handle your traffic. And if you're getting that much traffic, then, you know, it's time anyway. So, And then let me ask you, Dennis, what we post on the community board, is that automatically posted on our page too, our home? That, that's posted on your stream. And I, I'm, st I'm still wondering... It doesn't get posted to the mainstream. Like, it's not on the public stream. But it's my personal one. And if someone goes to your personal one, they'll see it. But what's weird is that I answered a lot of people's um, posts yesterday, and I don't see any of them listed. I just see the one in which I introduced myself. You'll only see the one that you start. Got it. You, okay. you won't so see the ones you respond. The ones that you responded on, they'll be on whoever you responded to. On okay. their page. Uh, you know, we could have made this private. Um, and I think down the road there may be some options to change things. I asked, uh, I, I sent out a, a, a question to a couple of them, and some said, no, you just have to close this one down and make a private one. And the other answer I finally got was, at this time, no, we do not have that capability. Mm -hmm. So I think rather than asking everybody to shut down their, uh, their communities, that want to have it a little more private. And it's not like we're, we're hiding anything. It's just, it would just be better, I think, to keep it off of our stream sometimes or just to keep it in there and not visible to just everybody. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes you might want to discuss something that is, is a little delicate and uh, it's better if we could do it in private or without any, any prying eyes. You know, see, cause we, I've kept the, um, the site kind of clean. It's just bloggers for now. Uh, although I have been toying with the idea of bringing in some brands from time to time just to uh, to work with us on things. Um, you know, we need the brands for certain things, but I'm still trying to figure out how to do it. Maybe hangouts with them or something. Well, definitely. I've talked to a few brands already about that. Uh, I, I've offered to bring them into Google+. Plus. You know, they don't have a presence yet and offered them, you know, some exposure. Uh, all in the hopes of, you know, them working with us, you know, giving our bloggers something to do. Uh, if there's money to be spent, if our bloggers can make some something and do do something for them, or in the long run too, you know, I I envision this community. I've I've tried to think of a way to make this community, and it just kind of happened. And one of the Google reps said, "Oh, we wanted to say something to you so bad when you were talking about it because they knew it was coming." Uh, but this is finally something that's happened. You know, when, when we lost Food Buzz the way we lost it and uh, we kind of lost our home or our community, a lot of us. And so this is replacing it. So I see uh, uh, a festival down the road. You know, I don't know when and exactly we'll do it, but I, I think uh, if things keep going the way they are, we should be able to get enough backing from some brands and some sponsors to do a Google uh, food festival, a food bloggers festival. I think that'd be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. to do, uh, possibly in different cities, too, depending on how much we can get. So uh, the community's growing really well, so I'm very happy. Great. And Google's happy, and that's even more important. You know, they're offering us opportunities because they see you know, what we're doing in our community, and uh, I think we're really the only community that's had this offer, so uh, that's a good thing. Well, I think we have you to thank a lot for that because you have so, you've really embraced and championed this whole G plus thing. And I was like, what the hell is Google plus? I want nothing to do with it. Until like about a week and a half ago, I realized, oh, well, something is happening there. So. Well, you know, when I started, um, when I started blogging and I finally realized what was going on uh, 
with blogging and what the opportunities were. Uh, the game had changed so much. Like, you know, there's never going to be another Reed Drummond. You know, there's never going to, you know, that's not going to happen again. There's so many bloggers out there now that you're going to find your niche. You, you can make money. You can do well. You know, you can, you can have a nice brand. But to have that kind of power and that kind of money, I don't think it's ever going to happen uh, because there's so many of us. So I felt like, number one, I, was, I, I came to the dance late. All right. Social media, I, I, still, I still don't have a clue about Twitter. I mean, I use it, but I don't know why. Uh, it's just, it just confounds me. And, and G+, Plus, when it started, I said, you know, this is the beginning. Google never fails. Or has it yet? Let's knock on wood. Let's hope on that. <laughs> and uh, they're dumping a ton of money into this, and I don't think they're going to fail. So right now, this is the ground floor, and we're still all on it. It's still early. Okay, uh, they have millions and millions and millions of people on here, but it's it's a big world, and uh, pretty soon it's going to keep growing and growing. And we're still on the bottom floor. We're going to be those people that you know are are uh, the big people in this social media as we started at the beginning. So, you know, that was it. You know, I'd look at other people on Facebook or on Twitter uh, and then see all the readership that they had and go, damn, you know, why can't I do that? Now people are looking at me and I got 300,000 followers and they're going, damn. Damn, why can't I do that? Right. Yeah. So <laughs> here's, here's, the, here's the good thing, okay? Uh, from what I understand, Google's going to start rotating bloggers and other people on and off the food and drink list to follow. Okay. And where do you find that food and drink list? Okay, when you go to your, um, when you open up G Plus, mm -hmm. I can't open it up now, but when you open it up, I'm there. They're on the left sidebar. It says Explore. 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 You click, you click mm -hmm. on Explore, and then you're going to scroll over. I believe it's on the right hand side now, mm -hmm. and it'll say Interesting People to Follow on Google. Ah, uh, oh, there we go. And you open that up. Oh, there's the Dalai Lama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you and the Dalai Lama. Wow. So you can click on him and say, hello, Dalai. It's Dennis Lama and Dalai Lama together as interesting people. Let me tell you, if the Dalai Lama ever started following me, I think I would just, that would be like the end. <laughs> That'd be bliss. <laughs> I bet he doesn't follow Reed Drummond. I bet he doesn't. You know, Reed, Reed isn't on here. I love Reed. Reed is great. But, uh, you know, a lot of the bigger guys haven't, haven't really embraced uh, Google Plus yet. So this is our edge right now. You know, um, we, we've got an opportunity to build inroads, to build readership, to get a following, and to make a community. Because, and, and this is where you're going to build. I, I had a guy this morning, um, and I'll, I'll get a message that says, boy, I wonder what Chef Dennis Lilly thinks about this. You know, so then I'll go and look. Or he says, I wonder what, what he's going to show me today that I'm going to have to go make tonight. You know, so I, I put a picture of lasagna up. I had to go dig something up real quick. <laughs> Mouth watering and it looked really good. <laughs> uh, and he loved it. You know, and this is a guy in a completely different field. He, contact, he connected me with a woman that was looking for a cake recipe one time in England. And she made it right then and there and came back and how she loved it. It was so easy to make her and her daughter make it. So these are the connections you make. And you meet people. And these people that you meet introduce you to other people that you would have never known. And, you know, they're becoming, they're going to become probably lifelong readers. More importantly, they're going to become friends. And it's, you know, you're not, you're not going to have that relationship with a lot of them because it's just there's not enough hours in the day. But, you know, every now and then you get to touch someone's life. And that means a lot to people. You know, I know it does to me when someone does that to me. When they take a minute just to talk to you or to answer something. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, you know I am important enough to them to, to respond. So when people do ask you, on the, on the same token, you're going to get a lot of people that you're just going to delete right away. And, uh, you know, you'll know who those are when, when they approach you or anything. But I'll follow anybody that has a picture, a complete profile, and post anything regularly, mm -hmm. you know, as long as it's not like deviant or something. But, so but do everything. you just follow them, or do you like put them in circles? I put them in circles, and I always advise if you're starting to start your circles and to break them up in a, a way that makes sense to you right away, because when you go back, when you've got a lot of people in circles, and you got to start dividing them up again, it's time consuming. 
just going through my food blogger circle to see who's active and who's not active takes weeks sometimes because I don't have that much time to do it to see who's still not posting or who's posting and then they move from an active to an inactive so when I share I only share my active food blockers okay? because, because I want the people that I'm sharing it to to uh, trust me okay that I'm, I'm giving them good people to follow not dead space and when you share other people, how do you do that? I sh I'll share a circle. Oh, share a circle. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll share a circle. Like I have, like I have, my food blogger circle right now has 460 food bloggers in it, which is is quite a lot. So when mm -hmm. I do go through it, it takes a long time to go through it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm picking up more now as uh, our community opens up and new people join. Like I want everyone to connect with me when they join, just so I have so I can put them in a circle and I can keep track of them and I can promote them you know, when I have an opportunity to promote them. Uh, I also can promote like if there was someone you know a good way to promote someone to your friends is when you see something good that they share that you like okay you pr you you uh, share it again to your circles so well, actually you're sharing not necessarily sharing to your circles but you're sharing it publicly and uh, they're gonna see it once you share it to the stream, you know, it'll be in their stream if they're mm -hmm. following. You. Uh, that's how that works. Uh, and talking about that, when you do share, share to the public. And we talk about this all the time. And I still see people sharing limited. Okay, sharing limited does two things. When you share limited, you're sharing to circles, so you're sending it to, to people. You're sending them notifications, and by sending them notifications. Uh, they're, you're filling up their inbox for no, no apparent reason. You're filling up their little notification boxes. I'll miss notifications sometimes simply because I have too many of them in there. So if you share something, you want to make sure that you're sharing something that's really important. You know, if you have to send it out, like if you're, if you're doing a hangout, if you're doing an event, if there's something that you really want to get out to everyone, then share it to your circles. But other than that, just share it public. Uh, don't share, you know, I, I had a friend that was sharing it public once and then sharing it to the circles twice. You know, you're being redundant. Uh, again, this is like using it like other social medias, like on Twitter where we would share it uh, three times a day for two days or something to get our maximum exposure. Okay, you know, and how many click-throughs do we all, do we ever really get from that? You know, so this is more of a community. And if you want your content to be shared, you know, make it good content. If you want your content to move back up to the stream and it's uh, to the top of the stream, people leaving comments for you drive your content back to the top of the stream. Okay, so that again is a good reason for you to leave comments when you can because you're going to drive a friend's content back to the top of the stream, more people are going to see it again. When they thank you, uh, if they go to your site and they thank you on your site, you know it's going to drive yours up. And when you say the stream, uh, clearly there's our own stream, but you mean like a general stream? There's the general public stream. Like there's our stream of what we post, mm -hmm. and there's the public stream. So if you responded to something of mine, it goes right to the very top of that. Top of the public stream. Again. It probably gets pushed down incredibly fast since there's yes. millions of people. Yes, there. people post it. And really, unless you're, you're going to go through and look for it. Now, a good way to do that is like I, I always tell people, all right, they were saying, you know, they can't keep track of their friends. Well, the very easiest way to do that is to, to break up your circles. Like if you're a niche blogger and you're a vegetarian or a vegan or you're a baker or you're whatever specific type that you do and you want to keep track of just those same people, set up a circle, a vegan circle, a vegetarian circle, okay? So now when I come on and these are my very good friends and we, we keep contact and we, we are like-minded and we want to share ideas and we want to brainstorm because we think the same way, I'll go to the top of my screen where it says, and it lists all your different circles. I'll click on my niche circle and open it up and that stream will appear. Now I can go down and see what all my friends have posted recently and I can plus one them, I can leave comments for them, uh, I can share them, and then I can go back to the public stream. Or, okay, I lost you there. Okay. Uh, when you open up your page, I am. Your profile page. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if I can. And you said you go to the very top. Yeah. Do you mean circle? go to the circles page? Let me see if I can open this up. Okay. 
Okay, not to your profile. Go to go home. Oh, okay. You two go home. All right, mm -hmm. go home and right across from home, mm -hmm. you see all. Oh, yes, okay. Okay, next to all, you should have your circle name. You got it. And your most active should be first. Mm -hmm. And then there should be two of them and then more. So if you click on one of those, it'll take you to a stream of nothing but those people. Got it. Okay. Okay. And so that way, it's easy to keep tracks on everybody you really want to keep track of. Okay. And you yeah. can you can send those people just a message if you really want to say you know, there was something Urshel life changing something happened in your life and you wanted your friends to know about it say it might not be all of them but a small segment of them uh -huh. you can send them that message privately you know if there were ten people on that list that you were really close to and you had them in a special circle you can message one person you can message five people you can message a thousand people you can message the world okay it all depends on who you share it to so uh, in one way I'm saying that's a good thing, in another way I'm saying it's a bad thing. Because uh -huh. when you're sharing just the circles, you're missing out on all the new people that might see it when it's yeah. in the public stream. Okay. If you're sharing it just to people that already know you, unless someone unless they reshare it to their to their circles, which is all they can do, if you share it limited, they can't share it public. So you're right. you're shooting yourself in the foot twice. Not only aren't you sharing it to new people, you're, you're not letting me share it to new people. Now here's the worst part. When I share it limited, that means all those people are getting notifications from me. Mm -hmm. So now I'm annoying all those people too. So I have stopped sharing anything that's posted limited simply because I don't want to over notify the people that I'm sending things to. I want them to, to understand when I do send them something that is important so they click on it. Yeah, I, I make everything public. Let me ask you, though, um, when it says that you've had a hangout, like I had that hangout with uh, Greg mm -hmm. today, and it says limited. That's limited to him, he and I, and that's Correct. it? Okay. So I can Whatever delete that. Is, that's no yeah. big deal. It's, it's on everything. Like if you sent me a private message, it'll come up on your screen and my screen, and it'll be in the stream. Right. We're thinking everybody can see it, but if it's limited, it's locked. So if I send it just to you, it, like it'll be just for you between you and I. Correct, and but it'll still be on both of our streams on our on our page streams. Okay. Uh, but when people come to it, if it wasn't for them, they can't see it. Got it. Which is why I don't really understand how they can see what we're discussing in um, the communities, and it, it's got to be because they're not. Now you can lock uh, posts in the community. There's a place to lock it. In the community, at the top, there's a little drop-down menu, and you can you can lock the posts. You can just like you can lock any post uh, that you that you put up, so there's no comments made on it. Because every now and then, I'll go to leave a comment that says you're not allowed to make leave a comment on this post. <laughs> Why did you bother posting? Okay, <laughs> you know. Well, I do know that when someone when I was trying to moderate yesterday and today, if somebody leaves a comment, I get a notification that they've left a message. Yes. I can't respond to that message. I have to go back to the original post and leave a message there. I can't do it through the through email or okay. through my own post. Oh, through through email. Yeah, through the post that's sent to me. Okay. It notifies me that I have a notification that, that someone has left something on the community. Okay. I can't respond to that. I have to go back to the community, look now, that up. Yeah, and then which, leave a message there. Which browser are you using? Chrome. Chrome, you are using Chrome, okay. Yeah. Hmm. And I had asked uh, Greg about that and he says, Yeah. These, I think these are all things they're working through, yeah, but I don't think in their wildest dreams they could have expected communities to do as well as they've done. In um, such a short time. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just mind-boggling how many people are racing to open them. And again, you know, a lot of it is going to, it's just like anything else, a lot of them are going to die down. Um, ones that are unmoderated, that are anybody can just join, they're getting huge, and they're just, they're not getting their... There's no way to really do anything in us. Why are you going in and just posting something for no reason, hoping somebody's going to see it? Your time's better spent doing that on the public stream where you're going to interact with people. Right. You know, the, the communities need to be set up as communities. Uh, right now, they're just being set up kind of chaotically, I think, haphazardly. Some of them, not all of them. 
Sullivan. But I mean, you can see that you sport like you could have a community for anybody. It could be your school. You know, it could be parents from your children's school. It could be uh, where you work, a specific region of where you work. You know, it's a good way to communicate between people. Can, you know, they, can, can you hear me now? Is what I was talking before, and nobody could hear me. I then had to leave and come back. So yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, you have a question? <laughs> yeah. So I'm wondering when you interact in these different communities. I mean, I guess you interact as yourself, but I mean, does it make more sense for me to be me or to have use my brand page? Like, what are most people doing, or what do you recommend? See, I I, I have been of the mind, and, and again, it's I'm not the authority on this, but it, it seems to me that you're better off being yourself. For, for a couple reasons, uh, unless your brand is already huge and recognizable, okay. But even then, on G Plus, G Plus is not set up really for brand involvement to be as uh, as powerful as it could be because they've got to find a way to filter out spam. All right. So if you're a brand, you can't follow me unless I follow you. All right. And that restricts your growth because mm -hmm. people aren't really a lot of people aren't going to follow you unless you follow them back. Number one, and uh, if they've got to find you and follow you, like you can't just go out on your own and find people to follow that you'd like to follow. You have to wait to find for them to find you. Okay, so you'll see a lot of people that are using brands. You know, some people have done very very well with them too. Uh, but you'll find a lot of people that are using brands don't experience very good growth. Now, if you have your own private and your brand and your double posting, again, you're kind of spinning your wheels. You know, pick one or the other, and I would just stick with that. Uh, the problem is, is your personal page is going to grow so much faster that you're going to want to share your brand stuff on your personal page, which is, you know, again, it kind of gets like, gee, what are they doing? You know, I, I just clicked on that on the brand, and now they're sharing it here. And you know, I'll, I'll go through there, and I'll see the same thing again. So, you know, I'll see it in two languages sometimes. <laughs> so I already clicked on it in your own language, and now I see it in English. I didn't know you were posting it in both. You know, there's a translate button. Granted, every now and then something gets lost in the translation. I'm going. To <laughs> I don't think that's what they mean, but you know, I, I get the. I still get the idea. You know, for the general part. So and. Um, We've actually had some bloggers come to me too that wanted to do these and said, you know, my accent is too heavy, uh, English is no good. I said, well, do it in your home language then. You can do it in German, you can do it in French. If so you, you can, can speak in a foreign language, it'll translate into English? It won't translate it, but you're going to capture your market in your own language. Oh, okay. Now, someone did tell me that they have a translator. As, uh, Larry Fournier has a. Uh, a blog show, a, a cooking show out there. He's another one of the chefs of Google. Mm -hmm. And he has someone who does German, speaks German and speaks Japanese, and they have a Japanese chef, and they translate it into German. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of bizarre. Uh, but so you, you can get a translator to translate for you. But I think, you know, if, if you're German and you're in Germany, your market is there. Yeah. Okay. If your English gets better and you want to do something in English later, then you can break into the American, the English market. But I think to start, you, know, you start, you know, do it in your home language, what you feel comfortable in, until you get to the point where you can do it and you don't. It, it doesn't seem a hindrance to you that you have an accent or that you don't know English real well. I interviewed a new chef for Chef Hangout the other day. I, I helped uh, go through the process, and he is in Barcelona. And he's going, no, oh, forgive me, my English is no too good. I don't know words. I said, oh, that's perfect. Uh, people are going to love that. I said, especially. He's really, Americans are suckers for accents. Huh? He's really good looking, too. And my wife's going by me because, why can't you talk like that? You know? <laughs> uh, I says, oh, no. Even when you do know the word, pretend you don't know the word. I said, it's going to work very, very well for you. So, you know, but again, they're self conscious. <laughs> Not thinking that way, thinking that they're embarrassed because they don't know English well. You know, well they know it a lot better than I know any other foreign language. So uh, you know, it, it's it's good. But uh, there's a market for all of us, is what I'm saying too. And you know, I think globally we're probably going to be able to do a lot with this. And everybody, a lot of people do speak English, so you've got a great opportunity to really spread out across there. And Stephanie, I just want to uh, throw something in. I was at a social media conference, and that that 
question came up about whether should I tweet or do social media under myself or under my brand and there was a very great answer which was people like to follow people they right. don't like to follow brands and I have to say that I have twice as many Twitter followers on for me than I do for Leeds Culinaria and, it's interesting because it's different with Facebook. Like with Facebook, I've been able to develop a really big following, you know, for my brand, and it's yeah. a whole different thing. I think it's a it's but, a whole different animal. People yeah. that are on Facebook are looking for the cupcake project. Right. They're looking for a culinary journey. They're looking. That's what they're looking for. They're they're targeting. They're mm -hmm. looking for recipes. They're looking for places they can go to pick. Uh, so I think brands do better there. But in, in any format, it connects people to people. And again, this is Google authorship at work. Okay, if you're mm -hmm. going to be a Google, you're going to apply for Google authorship, and you're getting it under your name. Okay, this is the whole benefit of it. When someone does a search, your picture is going to come up next to your post. Now, when I'm doing a search and I see somebody, even if I don't know them, but I see a person, I'm more likely to click on that than I am all recipes or, uh, you know, the food network. Because, you know, half the time those recipes don't work anyway. You know, you go through them. I, I've tried to make it. I'm going, oh, that doesn't seem right at all. Or I'll make something that's not. So I want to find a blogger that I can trust that I know really is telling me the truth and is making something and I'll see and then the next time I go to search and I see your picture I'm going to click on yours because right. I already know that you, you, know, you gave me something good so again the personal, the personal reaction between people the connection is very important so I, I always tell people to stay with their personal accounts uh, but again you know it's, it's yours it's your business you're the only one that knows what's right for you uh, and you know it's just your decision to make but uh, on Google Plus, I think that's the, the, the best bet, the way to go. And there's nothing wrong with you using your, yourself. You know, I know you want your business to grow, uh, but you know, that can always be your, your tagline, you know, underneath your name. Uh, and you're seeing, I'm seeing more people changing over and using their real names, too. Dennis, I have to go. Everybody, thank you very much. David, thank, you. thank you, David. Bye-bye. Take care. All right, if there's uh, no more questions, I think we're pretty much going to wrap it up, too. I've talked longer than I thought I would. <laughs> it's usually what happens. Mm -hmm. oh, um, will there be some place where you'll like have a document that goes through these steps, or should we just all go play with it? I, I, I or would, both? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't exactly put it that way. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I, will, I will print them out step by step. I will write them out for you. Actually, this is the first time I did. As I was doing it, I took notes because, you know, when you just do something and you know what to do, I wanted to be able to explain it in the, in the right way, in the right uh, doing it. Uh, so I will write it down and put it up, and I will post it to um, the YouTube event section of our community. That way, now you, you guys know how that works too in the community. Uh, when you post something to the community, if it's a specific topic, there's a little pull down menu. Mm -hmm. and post it to a certain section. So say you came in and, and I know Dennis talked about that. He put it in the events. So you go click on the events box and then the things that are listed in the events will stream. Okay. So that's a way to kind of keep track of things like if it's about photography, if it's about taxes, if it's about working with brands. Uh, if it's a general announcement, it's just going to go to the general announcements. But if mm -hmm. it's something important or that you want to categorize so we have a place to find it, that's a good way to, to do things. And where did you say the sign up for um, the whole master schedule for next week is? It is on, let me see if I can find this now that I, I clicked on. It should be in events. Is it in events? Okay. Well, let me uh, go back to here and let's see if I don't get the screen share of death this time. <laughs> uh, this one. Okay, can we all see that good? Yeah, pretty well. Okay, good. And it's not turning into each other. All right, that's <laughs> All right, in the sidebar of our thing here, uh, Hangouts and Events. Okay. Okay. Here's the community hangout. Let's see if I put it in here. Where did I put it? 
Here it is, the event schedule. Under Hangouts and Events is where it is? Yeah, it's... it's oh, I see it. Okay. Right Gareth there. posted it. Okay. Uh, did he post it? He may have posted it as well. Uh, I think he did. Here it is, PF area. Yeah, he did. Uh, okay. No. Well, I, I have it down there, too. It's, it's in mine. He may have posted it, too. Uh, but it's... Let me open it up. All right. Can you guys see that? The, the schedule? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. good. All right, so it's here. And I this wasn't working earlier where you could click on the sign up. There you go. Uh, and then you would type your name in. As, can you see the screen for the sign up page now? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. So then we would sign up to watch other people's hangouts? Correct. Okay. To let them know, you know, that there's support. You know, it, it gives you a place to click on, and then you go in here, and you would just type your name in. And okay. you're, 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 yeah. It looks like I'm first, so I could get all this. <laughs> if I can get any support, that would be awesome. <laughs> I'll sign up. Okay. So, I mean, that way we know who's going. And, again, nothing is etched in stone here. You know, if you guys want to move uh, to a different time or whatever, that's fine. Uh, Gareth asked if, uh, if he could do two. I think Stephanie wants to do two also. That's fine. You know, it's there's no pressure to do more than one. It's just, you know, they're trying to feel. We want to look good, uh, and we want to put our best foot. I have not uh, posted mine yet of what I'm going to do or when. I was waiting to see where there were openings or where we needed something, and I don't even know what I'm going to do yet, but I will do one. And I also asked my friends at Chef Hangout if any of them had time, if they would join us on this too. Uh, but moving forward, it looks like in Jan we're really going to try and do it in January um, more, you know, and, and all during the week uh, for the whole month. And if it works and we can get attention, we may be able to get some some real help with this, and they may start promoting it. I think that would be fantastic, and it's a good way to build your YouTube base too, because I have a channel and I have I don't know, like forty videos or something. But if when I do these, that just adds to my total. Right. So that's and, great. And it'll bring new people over and they'll look at your other ones too. Right. You know, that that'll help. But more importantly, this believe me, they notice what we're doing, and because uh, I I didn't even know they had watched my video and I said something happened to it and the case is oh yeah we saw that you handled that well. So and again you know with them rotating, I'm not saying they're going to pick whoever does it, but I mean, it, it puts you in front of them and gives you more visibility, and that certainly can't hurt. And, and I know I've, I've said it before, too, but if any of you are in cities that have Google offices, uh, try and find out who your rep is. We actually have some Google people in our community. Um, Greg is, is um, the one guy that we're working with. Um, Corey Davidson is down in Washington, D.C., and she is in our community. Um, Greg Wright is the other one that's in our community. And I have invited a few other uh, Google people in. I invited uh, Natalie Villabus in. Uh, she hasn't come in yet. Uh, she may. Uh, she gets so many requests, though. Um, and I invited my local uh, Google rep in. So, you know, if there's other Google people that want to come in, you know, those are the ones we want coming into our community. I think they can see anyway. <laughs> I think they have omnipotent powers, and uh, they can go wherever they Big want. Big Brother is watching. Yeah, you know, uh, but only for good. They're, they're a benevolent. Uh, <laughs> benevolent brother. Benevolent master, <laughs> you know? That's how I like. I, I keep asking them, says, when are we just going to get the thing that you can implant under the skin? You know, <laughs> oh. I, I just want to get that and get it over with, all right? <laughs> Skynet. And they're like, uh, don't worry, it's coming. It's coming. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah. Let's. And someone did say that Skynet. I went, oh no, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's a good thing. I think we're heading in a good positive direction. If you have friends that you know that want to come on, pass this on to them. Uh, other bloggers that that may not have found us yet or seen us. Uh, we're up over 400 now. And I know there's not that many active in there. And, it, you know, there's just not enough hours to be active in there all the time, too. So, but uh, um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, have such a nice community around us to, to work with. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off and uh, feed my doggies and then make dinner. And then I'm going to take a nap, I think. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Dennis. It was nice to meet everybody. Um, we're all in this together. Yeehaw. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, sign up.
Bye-bye. Bye, Dennis. Thank you. Good night, you guys. Take care. Good night. Bye.